we utilize three different project delivery methods. And I'll start at the bottom. The one on the bottom is called design, bid, build. That's where, it's what most of this country was built with. You hire a design team, they develop a full set of plans and specs. You put those plans and specs out to bid. You receive a bid from the contractor. The low bid gets the project as long as they're qualified. Um, the middle um, delivery method is construction manager at risk. That's what we're using on, on our current judicial project. And that's the re recommendation I would make to you. And so um, during that um, process, you hire a design team, and then literally right after that, you hire a construction team. And you hire them based on, both of them based on their qualifications. So you don't hire them based on price, or at least that would be my recommendation. You negotiate a price with them. But the advantage of that is that the construction team is involved in the design process. So they're going to comment on materials. They're going to uh, comment on maybe some, some opportunities to save money. And so it's a very collaborative process. But you do have two separate contracts, one with a design team, one with a construction team. And then the construction team is going to give you estimates on your construction costs along the way as the project plans develop. So that way you know you're in budget. So if they come back with a cost that's too high, then you go back to the drawing board and you maybe have to remove some scope for the project. Uh, the top one is design bid build, or design, excuse me, design build. And that's where you would have one contract and you would hire the design team and the construction team under that one contract. That is the fastest way to deliver a project but realize that you only have one contract. So you, you at that point, you're not going to have a contract with the design team. It's going to be the combined team. And I think as an owner, you lose a little bit of control with that. But the advantage of design build and then see them at risk is you can actually start construction before the plans are fully developed. So that's why it's faster than the, the traditional design uh, bid build method so this was our timeline uh, something else that I want to emphasize is we broke our design process up into two separate phases so initially we hired a design team along with a judicial planning firm that just focuses on court planning and I can't emphasize enough how valuable that is, and I would, again, encourage you to do that. You could make that one contract. So you hire a designer as part of that. They, they hire a, a judicial planning team, and you take that all the way through design. We broke that up into two parts because we didn't have the money for the project yet. So we wanted to present to the governor and the General Assembly, hey, what this project's going to cost. But the judicial planning team really looked out 50 years as to how this court building would function, what, what are the needs currently, but what are the needs going to be over the next 25 or, or 50 years. And that proved to be, um, proved to be very valuable. Uh, our project also got put on hold due to politics during the middle of the process because the uh, Governor Deal wanted to add two more Supreme Court justices, and the Supreme Court didn't want any more. So we went on hold for a while until they, they worked that out. Um, but uh, the project is about 75% complete. We hope to be done by, um, by the end of the year. Uh, our design and construction team included uh, Justice Planning Associates, so that's the firm that I was talking about that proved to be valuable. Uh, they're based out of Columbia, South Carolina. And then our design team was a joint venture between Robert Stearns, which actually is in New York City, and then Stevens and Wilkinson's a local design firm in Atlanta. So Stearns did the conceptual work, and as the, the uh, design progressed, then Stevens and Wilkinson kind of took over and, and finished up the design. And then uh, we had a landscape architect firm as well. And then our construction team was uh, Gilbane Building Company. Uh, they are based uh, out of Providence, Rhode Island, but they've had an office in Atlanta for, for over 20 years. 
Our all-in budget right now is just shy of $132 million, so a pretty significant project. So uh, that includes design work, demolition, construction, furniture, and all the inspections that go with that. That equates to about $590 a square foot for a building, which is a little bit on the high side, but it is, it is a court building that uh, is going to last probably 75, 100 years and uh, could argue is the second most important building in the state of Georgia. So um, that's one of the concepts that we, uh, we looked at. It's the one that we finally, finally decided to uh, stick with. Uh, once we said, hey, that's the building look we kind of want, we wanted to make sure that the stacking worked. So that's where this facility uh, court planning team can come in as they can really help you get your building organized, how it's going to function, how it's going to flow, and make sure it fits on your site and fits, on, fits within your, your project design. I'm just going to kind of speed up the pace here. Um, we also used uh, physical models of buildings to make, to make sure we were uh, happy with the design. Um, I went out on my screen. You guys still see that? Yes. All right. Touch it. Touch, touch, touch the screen? All right. Thank you. Um, we also did a physical mock-up of one of the courtrooms in the Georgia World Congress Center uh, during a time where, where they weren't busy. So that proved to be very valuable, too, because the judges got to sit uh, at the bench, and we made some, some changes to heights and distances based on uh, that project, or that, yeah, that project and that process. Uh, we also used some virtual models and animation that I'm going to talk about a little more um, in a few minutes. So again, that's our, our final concept and design. So if you drive through Atlanta, you'll start to see, you, you will see that building and it, it's starting to take shape. Um, we have seven levels, so I'm not going to go through every level of the building for you. Our main entrance will be on the first floor with uh, secured um, entrance for, for our visitors. Our judges have separate entrances. That, are secured that only they can access with badges. So we, we, we put a lot of thought into security, uh, both from uh, entering the building and also from a blast perspective, uh, some van parking uh, near, near the site. Uh, the appellate court is the blue area. It's on the third floor. And then the Supreme Court is located up at the top on the, on the, sixth, on the sixth floor. Um, a, a process that we use that, again, I would highly recommend is called 3, 3D or building information modeling. Uh, the design, I would, I would make sure your design professional has the capabilities of, of doing that. Uh, the advantage is, is you can identify clash detections in the design during that process. And they can also do some animation, like some key spaces or some virtual reality so that you can experience the building before it gets, it gets built. So I want to show you an example uh, of that. So this is our atrium. So the atrium is nowhere close to being uh, completed like this, but you can see uh, through this animation, you can get a good feel for what the atrium and what the interior of that building is, is going to look like. Uh, this is the appellate courtroom. So again, the judges saw this, they got to uh, make comments on it, and we've made adjustments because of this process and, and doing a, a physical mock-up. Here's the Supreme Court room. So I think you can see how valuable having this capability is because with all this mill work, you don't, you don't want to make a mistake. You want to get it right the first time. You don't want to have any change orders or rework. And then this is a typical uh, judge's, uh, judge's chamber. Probably had more discussion about the judge's chambers than we did the courtroom. <laughs> <laughs> sure. Nobody's surprised by that. No. 
Uh, so, so just some you know notes of interest: 224,000 square feet, seven floors. Um, well, atrium will be 100, 112 feet feet high. So, uh, I went through that really fast, but I'd rather, um, I guess, in, in summary, and I'd be glad to take some questions. Again, I want to emphasize that you hire a a. a, a judicial facility planning firm that's part of the design team. You could do that separate or you can, can do that all under one contract with your design. Uh, and I would also recommend that you use the CM at risk delivery process because it's the most collaborative and it also gives you feedback along the way that you're, you're on budget. And that, that is so critical because the traditional design bid build method, you don't know you're on budget until the day you open bids. You know, designer will give you estimates, but you really don't know. So under the CM at risk process, we, we give the team a budget and they can't exceed it. So you, you don't go over budget. Um, and then the last thing is I would encourage you to use the, the building information modeling, the 3D uh, design process design and animation process so you can experience the building before it's built. So uh, I'll pause now.